Hey there, thank you for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and join me for part three of an ongoing Monkey Kid retrospective series where I'm taking a look at every single Monkey Kid set released so far. I've been recording these videos in March 2021, and I don't expect there to be many new releases between now and the time that these other videos are coming out, but if there's anything outdated, I will mention it at the time of publishing. But without further ado, let's just dive right into the sets. Last time we took a look at these so-called good guy vehicles. The first video covered the monkey kid vehicles himself, and the second video covered the vehicles used by his allies. Today we'll be shifting focus from the heroes and taking a look at the first villain faction of the summer of 2020, specifically the Iron Bull Demons. These ones are actually recurring characters that still appear in the modern seasons of the show, but were the first villains the theme started out with. So I figured it's a good time to just dive right into these and take a look. Let's go. All right, so here we have the different builds making up the Demon Bull faction. Now I'm going to be totally honest, I personally am not the biggest fan of the aesthetic of the bull faction here, outside of a few specific builds. I feel like it's just a little bit too close to more of the same of what we've gotten in other LEGO themes, unlike the Monkey Kid faction sets which most usually have a distinct flair or unique aspect to them, a lot of the stuff here just feels like stuff that we've gotten before. This bull fortress here just literally feels like an evil version of Fortrex from Nexo Knights. This tank right here has been seen a thousand times in Nexo Knights and Chima and even in Jago. Even this truck right here feels like a build that we could have gotten in Chima just replace this right here with a wolf head or something. And of course you've got your standard goons on motorcycles up there that we've seen a thousand times especially with the Ninjago Sons of Garmadon wave. I even think that we got an Ultra Agents mini mech build that was almost identical to this one. So that being said, again, it just feels like a lot of very similar stuff to things already existing in LEGO's portfolio, which I personally am not a big fan of. The big exception here is the Demon Bull King mech. Or I guess this isn't even really a mech, it's just supposed to be him in a large form. Getting this right out of the way, this is my favorite build out of the entire villain faction. For all of these villains, I think this is probably my favorite build. I just love how menacing this is as an actual living organic creature, and since he is a little bit smaller than the Monkey King Warrior Mech, you're not too too worried about things that are going to be falling off of him, or moving him around too much causing pieces to fall off. And yeah, you can even get him in kind of some semblance of a walking pose just because of how stable the feet actually are. These are massive feet and you're not going to be actually being able to angle them whatsoever. They're pretty much just fixed straight onto the leg. So, I mean, obviously that is a bit of a con in terms of articulation, but it also means that it's so stable that it can actually support a walking pose just because they're so large. The other thing is that I do actually really enjoy the shoulder technique here. It uses a very similar one to the Monkey King Warrior mech, but since the arms aren't as long and massive as that set and it isn't wielding a two-handed weapon, you can actually get this in kind of unique poses. The flamethrower right here is suitably menacing for a bull warrior of this size, and I love how you can actually swing the axe up and down without a major fear of it falling off. It really feels like you could deal some real damage with this fiery axe, reusing the Nexo Knight's pieces to give it kind of a rounded axe feel, which is very, very nice. The other thing is that I don't want to get into minifigures too, too much, but what's really neat is that they actually included a miniature version of the Demon Bull King right here to go alongside this set when he was still in his non-powered up form, you can see that it's a perfectly mini representation of the much larger mech and works out really well too. It's almost a perfect one-to-one -one smaller build. Moving on from here though, which is again one of my favorites, including a light up chest. Always really cool to get a light up function in a Lego set, especially because that looks like his heart and the rib cage wrapping around. And also the head, which you can move around and has a great parts reuse of the elephant trunk. We can move on to the next largest set here, which is unfortunately probably one of my least favorite sets out of the entire Monkey Kid wave. Despite its large size, I feel like there's just not too, too much that can be done with this set in particular, save for the excellent miniature bull that came with it. 
Again, this just feels like the Fortrex, but a little bit worse because you can't even really roll it alongside too much. It's not meant to be a mobile vehicle. What it's meant to do is that these are meant to open up and you can release the forward truck in the front here, which is actually supposed to be a mobile vehicle of its own. But to be honest, kind of an awkward one. It has a massive front to make up for the shapeliness of the sides of the castle right here. But when you move it to the back, this just feels really unfinished. It's also kind of like a dump truck because you can move this and dump stuff back. Not really sure where exactly that entire aspect of it was going. Kind of an awkward vehicle. I don't necessarily know how good this looks when split from the actual build, but when put with the actual build together, it also doesn't actually stand out too, too much. Again, it just feels like stuff that LEGO has given us before, which isn't necessarily a bad thing when the stuff that they've given us before is really good, but I'd say this is even kind of a downgrade from stuff like the Fortress, which was actually one of my favorite Nexo Knight sets because of how unique of a concept it was. Here it just feels a little bit strange and overused. It also feels very awkward to be just in a very rectangular, boxy structure. Nothing too creative going on with how this vehicle or building is built, so honestly, not one of my favorites. It does have a light-up feature, which is significantly less cool than the light-up rib cage in the back of the mech here. So honestly feels like a bit of a downgrade going from this set to this one. But I mean, it's still nice that we are getting large villain faction buildings and vehicles, unlike Ninjago, which gives us a thousand hero vehicles and then maybe throws in a smaller villain vehicle for scale. But setting that aside, let's take a look at the massive Inferno truck here. Now, what's interesting is that the bull color scheme is kind of split. You've got a very red color scheme for the red sun, but you've got a more muted black and purple color scheme for the bulls. So what happens when those mix? Well, this one actually has a pretty cool transformation feature. Moving the cab all the way up to the back here and pushing this forward causes a forward vehicle to be deployed from the front featuring Red Sun riding the vehicle himself. It's actually a pretty nice vehicle, and honestly, this one feels a little bit over-engineered. If you look at the bottom here, you've got these inexplicable hinge pieces just being used because they could. These don't actually move, and they don't act as hinges, and this actual piece that's sticking out of the front isn't even used to hold on anything. They're just there for, I guess, detail? Kind of a strange thing to include, You've also got all sorts of really crazy construction going on, studs on the side, studs going around, things mounted on clips, all for what ultimately amounts for just a pretty small trike vehicle, but it definitely has a very unique look and feel. Unlike the larger fortress, which just feels like more of the same, this trike actually feels like something pretty unique and not like anything we've gotten in LEGO before, so I'll give it points for that. What's also really neat is that, again, this is another example of Monkey Kid doing a transformation feature, which leaves both halves looking pretty good. I love how there's literally a seat on the front of the cab here, such that when this moves up, it literally just looks like a large truck. And the gap in the bottom is even made up for with a stud shooter at the back there. So a pretty neat transformation feature. Really clever how they made the front of the cab that goes over here, just the front of a taller truck here. I think that's a function that's really, really neat kind of cool to see so I do actually very much appreciate it and it is very easy just to recombine them move the cab down looks like a perfect vehicle so I probably will say that this is also one of my favorites among the bull faction while it's not the most interesting of builds it at least is trying to do stuff new and while I do like many of the other monkey kid sets more this is a pretty decent set on its own so far my rankings would be number one easily then number two and then in a dismal number three over here. But now let's move on to one of the other builds, which is the tank over here for, oh boy, $50 for this sucker right here. <sighs> yeah, I, I honestly don't know which one I dislike more, this one or this one. They're not bad builds, it just feels like they're wasted potential for sets that could have been so much better, especially when the amount of budget you're pouring into a theme like this. This literally feels like a set we would have gotten in Nexo Knights, and I know I keep saying this, it's, I'm not saying Nexo Knights was bad, it just feels like it's more of the same in terms of LEGO's portfolio, rather than giving us something brand new. 
like the Demon Bull mech, for example. That being said, the action feature isn't actually a bad one. Moving this up here causes toxic waste barrels to roll out of his mouth in a very satisfying build, and the gun turret in the back actually makes it such that it can still shoot through the hole in the mouth. I actually do like this feature. I feel like there's just maybe a little bit more that could be done with this concept for a set that could have elevated it beyond what it is right now. It is a very fun feature to move this up and down, kind of like a chomping motion of a jaw and release the toxic barrels. Maybe there's just something that could have changed the stance of the way that this car is built too, because as it is right now, this just feels like a standard kind of large power miner wheelbase Got these smaller Nexo Knight wheels here, and there you go, just a standard villain vehicle. Nothing too crazy going on, especially compared to the more inventive stuff that's going on in many of the other larger or smaller sets. But then we can probably move on from this. Nothing too much else to talk about on the Bull Alone faction. We've got this miniature mech, which honestly I really like. I know I said it's very similar to an Ultra Agents build, but I also really like that one. And this build is actually really nicely posable for something of this size and scales very nicely against the miniature Monkey Kid mech from the larger boat set. I would even venture to say that I like this build better than I like this or this. It's probably number one, number two, and probably even number three for this build here. And then... Whew, I don't know, four and five. I think I like this build better than this because this is actually doing something new. This miniature build, I wish that LEGO would do more stuff like this. Just include a tiny little mech build in a set. It reminds me of some of the better superheroes mechs, but it's nice to get one themed around an original theme. You can imagine an army of these rampaging through the city. It's just enough to make a minifigure seem more formidable without making it feel oversized or comical. So... I think it is a really nice and fun build, scales pretty nicely, it was included with the $150 Monkey King Warrior mech, so it is a very nice inclusion there, and it's just a very neat little mech build that I actually do really appreciate. That being said, there's nothing much to say about this boat here, which is just a side build to the larger hero boat and really only exists to include some opposition. Moving on. This right here was the barrier gate to fight against the maze dragon bike. It's kind of a funny concept imagining that the demon bulls have set up roadblocks around the city, but I can kind of see it. I can kind of buy that concept. Very, very simple build, but again, just also feels like something that another theme would do. Nothing too unique going on here or anything to even suggest that this has anything to do with bulls themselves other than the hint at horns at the top here. One thing that I do actually really like about the Bull Faction is that these two come on bikes, which I normally would say feel repetitive and overused, but this one bull, the Bob Bull, comes on a, on a bicycle, like a, just a regular pedal bicycle. His companions are outfitted in these very mean-looking large bikes with horns on the front, massive headlights, guns mounted on the sides, chains used to rip ATMs out of the wall. And then just at the back of them, you have this little guy coming on a regular bicycle trying to keep up with his little miniature headlight and pink colored horns. Just a really funny looking build to me. I probably would not have even appreciated these bikes as much as I do without the little bicycle there to flank them. So Lego, I, I like it when you do stuff like this. Do more funny stuff like this that kind of plays a twist on the standard trope of bad guys in a bike gang or running on bikes. Go, get one on an actual bicycle. This is really funny. Besides an extra hovercraft for Red Sun, which is pretty much the same sort of build as the Monkey Kid ones, it's good that he has an opponent. The final Demon Bull or slash Red Sun build that we have here is the newest one for 2021. Interesting to see how it's still getting a continuation into the new year. And this is a very small Red Sun's jet. Now I will say that unfortunately it's very hollow from the underside. The handle is also very obvious. It does have a pretty nice and satisfying feature. Pull the trigger here and the bolts will launch out at differently timed speeds. You can also click the engine down just to reload the bolts up in the front, which is a pretty neat function and actually very satisfying to continue to click the engine up and down like so. I don't know if any Bionicle fans are watching this, 
But this kind of reminds me of a larger Bionicle vehicle that we had. It's almost the same scale as the Axelara T9 to a figure. We've got this massive engine or rounded piece up at the front, engines going on in a triple shape in the back, and a gun shooting up at the front here. Sure, the bullhorns feel a little bit tacked on and obviously weren't there on the Bionicle set, but it is kind of funny to see it. The other thing that I really do like about this is that it shares the same design features as the other Red Sun build. If we move his truck back into frame here and pop the cab up, separating it out, you'll notice that they use the metal beard beard piece as a headlight for the front of his build, adding a little bit of an extra character towards the Red Sun vehicles. They've done that exact same thing with his jet here, suggesting that it is the same crazy genius who's invented these two vehicles. And it very much feels that these two vehicles were built by the same guy. At least in-universe. I'm sure they weren't built by the same designer. Maybe they were, but even if they weren't, it's so nice that they actually included this piece almost like a signature piece for Red Sun's creations. But with that, I think we have summed up all of the Demon Bull faction for the first wave of Monkey Kid villains. While I love the Monkey Kid sets themselves for his faction, the villain stuff was a little hit or miss to me personally for the first year. Love this mech. Kind of like the truck. Love the little builds that they have, like this little miniature version of the Demon Bull, the little miniature version of a mech. I also don't really mind this one either. This is a pretty fun looking set. But then you got some misses, like this vehicle right here. You've got the very, very large and expensive kind of miss in my eyes here being too close to stuff that LEGO's done and kind of just being a bland shape and too rectangular. So very much a hit or miss villain faction to me, but hopefully this is rectified by the next villain faction, which honestly is really, really interesting and really cool. All right, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of Brick Breakdown, where I took a look at the Monkey Kid theme in particular. Stay tuned for next time, where we'll be definitely discussing the second villain wave, specifically the spider vehicles right here for March 2021, as well as a few of the other side buildings and civilian stuff that I'll fit into that video as well. As usual, stay tuned for the end of this series where I'll be discussing a ranking of my favorites and least favorites, as well as my recommendations for what you should get if you want to start out with Monkey Kid. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.